Welcome here, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to make a presentation on the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, the most interesting part of the presentation will be talking about how it was not working and then it was working because we did a lot of stuff. So who I am, I'm Alejandro Pino Iglesias. I have been working in Galia for 16 or 17 years now. Uh, on the last four years, I have been working uh, for the drivers of the Raspberry Pi, the OpenGL and the Vulkan drivers, but in the last three years, I have been more focused on the Vulkan drivers. Uh, before that, I also have some experience with the Intel GPUs. So, just in case, I'm, I'm going to start to start with an introduction on, on concept. So, what is MESA? MESA is the most important project and on most free software project related with um, GPU drivers. It provides implementation for OpenGL, Vulkan, and other APIs. Basically, the idea of, well, the idea, the um, the main advantage of using MESA is that it provides a front end, so anyone that wants to create a driver doesn't need to start from scratch. So it provides met, um, functionality to parse GLSL, to parse SPRB, uh, functionality related to the compilers. So if after parsing uh, the GSL and SPRB, you can you know process it with all these compilers, uh, classic um, optimizations and, and libraries. Is it also handles the API for OpenGL um, and Vulkan. And in the case of OpenGL, there is a lot of um, state tracking of the OpenGL API. So if you start to define uh, vertex backtests and all the stuff, it's you know tracked internally and also the state. Lately, in the past years, um, a lot of um, functionality that was implemented for Vulkan on different drivers is being refactored and this is also a common part and it's been decreased also to try to add something similar to the state tracker of NGL to Vulkan but this is a work in progress. So this is the front end and then on the back end you will have each specific driver. There we have a list of them. Um, for this presentation the important one is Broadcom, the Broadcom GPUs. So in the most drivers there are um, two drivers for the OpenGL, PC4 and B B3D and in the case of Vulkan BCD V. So what is Raspberry Pi? <laughs> uh, Raspberry Pi is a series of small single board computers. Uh, the original purpose of these uh, boards was um, really uh, leaning towards um, computer science teaching, but it became a device really popular, so it expanded out of this target, and now it's also, it's also used in other uh, cases, industry, computer science uh, teaching, etc. etc. Uh, the processor is IRM and the GPU is video core Broadcom. So in the past years, this, we have this, the, the, this timeline. Um, I'm listing here only the, what is Raspberry Pi and number, but these other devices, like the Raspberry Pi Pico, the Raspberry Pi Compute. But as you can see in this timeline, more or less each three years, there is a new device. Uh, in relation with the drivers, uh, also we have five devices. Um, for the um, Raspberry Pi 1, 2, and 3, uh, both the, uh, the renderer and the display is BC, BC4. Uh, in the case of the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, the GPU is different, is a new one, is different, is Video Core 6, but it is still used as the display, the BC4. And then they have a kernel driver for the rendering that is B3D. And now in the Raspberry Pi 5, it uses the same layout, but uh, the GPU is different. So, um, when Igalia, uh, the company I work for, uh, started to collaborate with the, the, these drivers, it started to collaborate in, for, in 2018, more or less when the Raspberry Pi 4 was announced. At that time, uh, BC4 and B3D the drivers were already uh, working and available on, on MESA. So when we started to work on, on this project, um, we started to work um, first um, uh, improving the driver, the OpenGL driver, and also adding extensions. Uh, so some years later, um, Raspberry Pi 4 became uh, OpenGL ES 3.1 conformant. But you know, Vulkan is the, is the new, well, the new API. <laughs> it's, around, it's now half five years, more or less, I think. 
Uh, so some years later, after you know, getting used to the driver, uh, the OpenGL driver, uh, providing more extensions, we started to work on the Vulkan driver. It's I have there the Kudotos from scratch in the sense that before we started to work on that, there is no Vulkan driver, and then there was Vulkan driver. But as I said before, one of the uh, advantages of using Mesa is that you have a lot of common things. So we were using the, the Mesa front end, and in the same way. Take into account that um, the driver is for the video core uh, GPU. Uh, we are also reusing a lot of components, like for example the definition of the hardware comments, commands, the definition of the ISI, and the compiler. So, for example, um, for the two drivers, for the OpenGL and the Vulkan driver, the compiler. What I mean, compiler. I mean the shader compiler is the same, and also uh, the simulator. Here. Are Quick timeline of the, the Vulkan driver. Uh, we started it on November 2018. Uh, I'm not going into detail because it's not the purpose of this um, presentation. But in one year, we have uh, the Vulkan 1.0 uh, conformant. And since then, we have been working on adding more uh, extensions. So it became 1.1 and 1.2 conformant, and also working uh, a lot on, on improving the performance. So here are some screenshots about the Repair P4 and some the, this is the Unreal Engine uh, demos. So, in, and now we have a new uh, toy, that is the Raspberry P5. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the GPU is Brothco, it's a new <laughs> is the, but it's the, a new version of that architecture and it, it includes a lot, uh, several new features compared with the Raspberry P5. Uh, Raspberry P4. So, for example, it has a higher clock rate. It provides um, uh, support for more render targets. In the Raspberry Pi 4, is 4. Now we, now we can go up to 8. It includes better, better support for subgroup operations, uh, better instruction level parallelism. Uh, also, it is true that also this is improved. Also, there is more room for, for, for performance improvement. There is also a, a little more register pressure. So, we need to make some. Uh, some work in order to improve the register allocation. There is also more uh, image format supported, new assembly stations, like new, met new instructions to, uh, to, uh, to have to, to packing instructions. So in, in that way, you have just one instruction to make a packing that in, in other cases will require several assembly instructions. And also this hardware support for features that are uh, included on Vulkan, like death clamp, death bounce, and, and etc. But the thing is that um, before I started to talk about these new uh, features compared with the Raspberry Pi 4, we need to take into account that there is a lot, in order to support all these features, uh, there is a lot of changes, uh, internal changes on, on, on the driver. So, for example, uh, in order to include more hardware commands, commands and more features, uh, several of these hardware um, packets um, uh, needed to ch uh, were changed. What I mean, uh, packets, uh, what I mean is that, for example, when we have a driver and you want the driver to do something, like for example, configure the render targets. For example, one thing that I mentioned before is that now we have up to eight render targets. So. In the Raspberry Pi 4, you configure the, the render targets in some way, and now that you have eight, you uh, configure the render targets in a different way. So when you emit some hardware packets to the GPU, now they are different. In the same way, um, as now we have new assembly instructions, and not, not only new assembly instructions, but some of them um, changes, uh, the compiler needs to take that into account. In any case, in spite of all those changes, we started under the assumption that we needed we didn't need a new driver. Uh, I mean, I say that because, for example, from the Raspberry Pi 3, the driver is uh, the BC, BC4, and for the Raspberry Pi 4 is B3D. So they need a new driver, similar but a, a new total driver. But in any case, for this for this one, we started with the assumption that we will need we wouldn't require a new driver, but just having several code paths on the data that we have. So, uh, we first started with some pre-work for um, uh, the thing is that for the OpenGL driver, the B3D code base, uh, it was already organized in a way that supported several hardware generations, but that was not the case with the Vulkan driver. 
So the first that thing that we, we did is reorganize the Vulkan um, code base, sorry, the Vulkan driver code base. So it could be easy to add hardware generations. And we made that work in a general way, so we already uh, sent that um, to mess upstream. Uh, the idea with the development is that even if we were focused on the support for the Raspberry Pi 5, uh, at any time that we see any change that could be um, uh, made sense upstream, we sent we sent it either uh, streams. The idea is reduce the delta, the difference between this, uh, because at the beginning um, to implement the, the support for the PP5, we were working on a downstream uh, branch, but the idea is this branch to be not really um, um, uh, too big. <laughs> and in spite of that, when we finish the support for the Raspberry Pi 5, we have like 120 patches. So in spite of that, we were always doing the, the, the effort to keep in that, uh, that set as small as possible. And in order to avoid a lot of work revising against Mesa Main uh, at the end of the development, each week we were revising against uh, Mesa Main. So the, the first phase of this work, uh, we made that using a simulator. Um, there were there was several advantages for using the simulator, but the main reason for using the simulator is that at that time we didn't have the device. In any case, as I said, using the simulator has some advantages uh, because that means that you just you can just use your laptop to to work on the driver. But at the same time, the obviously the performance is not the same. So it was not feasible. It's not was it's not really possible to use the simulator with real applications. In any case, at that point, just at the beginning of the development, uh, that was not a problem, because there were so many changes that not even regular tests from uh, regular tests now in this probably this is something that I should have included in the introduction. Uh, <clears throat> the main reference uh, in, for testing is the Kronos project called CTS. That is the one that, uh, that is used to, to get a driver conformant. Conformant means Kronos is the institutions that define the different um, APIs. So if you want, let's say, the seal of official seal from Kronos saying this driver is conformant with our API, you need to pass all the CTS tests. But in addition to that, the, those CTF tests is, are used for, at least for all the people that work on drivers to develop their driver. But in any case, as I was saying, at the beginning of this work, even those tests was, were too complex because uh, in, in the end, it's really complex to write a, te, a, a regular test without, without using a lot of features. So, for example, in those tests, usually you are testing a new way to render and then in order to see if that rendering was working, you copy back and then compare. So you are having there two things, a rendering thing and a copy thing. So at the beginning, um, we were using really simple, as much simple as possible uh, tests. For example, uh, a test that just clear a buffer and that you could just copy the buffer without using the Vulkan API, for example. And also to make that simple, we started with just one driver. Uh, in our case, we started with the Vulkan driver, and it was mostly because uh, the people that we decided to put on working on this were the ones that were working on the Vulkan driver, so we have more in our heads what we needed for the Vulkan driver. And also, as there were so many things that were not working, and we were working on really simple tests, it also, it was also we decided it was complex to um, uh, two parallel stacks in, in, with several developers. So we started first with, with just one person. So uh, the thing is that the, uh, even after the simple tests uh, only required some hardware packets updates, it, it still requires a lot of changes in the compiler. So for those tests, it was relatively easy to update the hardware packets, but then it, it required a lot of work um, on the compiler. The focus at the beginning, at this point, is getting something working. So, for example, in, in the compiler, um, when you define instructions and some, moment, and some moments, there are lowerings to uh, provide some optimizations. Like, for example, um, this GPU allows to, in some situations, to run um, 
uh, more uh, two intrusions at, 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 at the same time. But in order to do that, you need to take into account um, the relations between the extensions and also some hardware uh, requirements. But at that point, uh, we were focusing on getting something working. So all the optimizations, uh, well, at least most of the optimizations, were uh, disabled. And after all this work, at some point, we, we arrived to the famous triangle. The triangle. In fact, the first one that was working was a triangle with just one color, because we, uh, one of the things that this triangle has is that, as you see, you define one color per vertex of the triangle and this one, uh, this gradient between the, the vertices. So at this point, when we finally got uh, this simple test working, so we have a base, um, uh, we started to, it was more simple uh, or feasible to, to move to, to having more than of one developer working. So we started to work two people at that moment. We still, at this, we still were using uh, really small tests, uh, working by ourselves manually, just focusing on some aspects. And then at some point, we were able to move to, to use um, CTS as a reference. Uh, we kept working on that. Um, the thing is that, um, as I say, at this point, we were working with the simulator. And also, our objective was getting as much CTS tests as possible working. Uh, there are some kind of tests that, that are not really suitable for the simulator, like, for example, synchronization tests. This is because in order to use the simulator, the simulator in the end is basically a, a, a library that um, you, instead of calling the GPU, you are calling this library and provides an output. But in order to use that, in the end, you are using a normal laptop. So the synchronization test that requires fences and all uh, other stuff, the, it's tricky to get that working well. And as the objective is this getting working on the simulator, on the, sorry, on the real device, we usually don't try to fight too much to get in those working. So when we get a good bunch of those CTS working on with the simulator, we ported all these changes to, to the OpenGL. Uh, that was not a lot of work because, as I say, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> the most complex part from, from this was uh, working on the compiler, updating the compiler, and the, and the compiler is common for the Vulkan and the OpenGL driver. So when we port in the changes to the 3D uh, um, to the OpenGL driver, we're most focusing on the hardware packets. After that, we re-implemented, uh, as is, um, if you recall, uh, I mentioned before that we disabled the several of op, uh, compiler optimizations, so we re-implemented that f in order to support to be working with the Raspberry Pi 5. And at the end, af after that, we started to add in features uh, that were added on Raspberry Pi 5, that also were not supported by the Raspberry Pi 4 hardware. And uh, more at that time, uh, we finally get the real device. What we received uh, was um, we have a kernel that was working, so it was bootable. So, you know, you had have the Raspberry Pi 5, you connect it, and it boots, and you could compile all the libraries. But it didn't have the, the, the GPU support, the kernel. So the first, time, the first thing that we need to do is to, to provide the support on the kernel. And doing that, we got some surprises. And first, we found um, there were also some changes on, on the signals on, on the kernel. Um, we also found some difference on, on how to handle the computer shaders. Um, th that was tricky because uh, it was not exactly as the documentation were saying. Uh, the, and, and this is more in the sense that in some cases it was like uh, the bit 32, uh, you need, we, sorry. In some cases, where something like, for example, in order to configure this, you need to do something on the bit 32, but in, in reality, it's the bit 34. So in some cases, getting this uh, feature needed some um, uh, try and test. And in other cases, we needed to um, um, 
suppose what it was happening and suppose what would be the solution and asking um, uh, people from Kroprothcon about if that theory was correct and we did that. So in this in this case the, the main problem is that sometimes we we didn't we have something that was not working and we were not sure why. So it was a lot of investigations and investigation and try and, 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 and try it. <coughs> also uh, when we reset the, the real device uh, in the case of Vulkan, testing it was not really uh, a problem because for the case of Vulkan, it was easy to run it without an X server or Wayland because uh, it was possible to run it without that. But for the case of the OpenGL and OpenGLES, uh, for the CTS, you require an X server. And, in order, and also for the desktop, you also need an X server, obviously. But the thing is that when you run uh, the X server, you need to launch it using the driver that you have and not the driver that is in, on the system. So in the end, we required uh, to build X and their dependencies and also starting the server uh, manually. That, uh, um, that needed slightly more um, uh, manual uh, configuration that we are used to. So, uh, and now uh, here, uh, a timeline of the Raspberry Pi 5. Um, so finally it was announced on the 8th on September of last year. Um, when it was finally announced, we are at that the same day we sent the, the, the code that we have to in order to be in, uh, merged upstream. As I said, uh, even if we try to keep um, the subset as small as possible, in the end it was like 120 patches. Um, so it got some time to get the review done because um, the good thing is that uh, most of those patches um, were only touching our driver because uh, as any other uh, upstream project uh, that has support for different things uh, if you are touching things that could affect other drivers then the review process is longer because you need to get involved with more people. Uh, for the basic support of the RPP5, we are only touching our driver, so we are we were the main responsibility for that. Uh, and in fact, we also try to avoid these touching things that could affect other drivers, but creating the uh, putting those patches on a different mesh request that was not mandatory, just a, 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 a way to implement other features. So in slightly less than one month, all that code got merged. And, and in October, the last year, uh, the RPP5 uh, was available to be to, to buy. And two months later, uh, our code was got from Kronos, uh, the Vulkan 1.2 and OpenGLS ES 3.1 uh, conformance. So what we are doing that uh, not right now? Um, obviously, the maintainer work. This is a new driver, a new device. It has less than six months, so we are getting uh, issues created by the users. Uh, we, are we are still adding features. The good thing is that most of the work that we are doing adding features um, can be used for both the Raspberry 4 and Raspberry Pi 5. And we are really near uh, to, to implement the, the, the functionality needed for Vulkan 1.3. And now for the PP5, uh, we are uh, retaking, working on performance work. And I, I finished, I think that I was really, really fast, sorry for that. <laughs> um, so if anyone has any question. Okay, so. Um, Hello, hello. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so earlier, <coughs> sorry. So earlier you mentioned um, kind of abstracting or making common like uh, some of the infrastructure, like for example, the shader compiler. I was wondering, uh, were you making the, um, were you making that more abstract or are you, 
upstream net infrastructure to Mesa. So now that there's like common Vulkan infrastructure within Mesa across all different types of GPUs or specifically just for your RPI efforts? Oh, okay, um, on that there are two parts. Um, as I said, Mesa is really well structured. So they, it has a front end of code that all drivers are supposed can use. So uh, on the case of Vulkan right now, as, as I mentioned before, they are, try are making an effort because one of the things that they, they found is that in different drivers, uh, Vulkan drivers, they were, especially at the beginning, they were just copying and pasting from one driver to the other. So on Mesa, they are doing an effort to after that. But as we are helping on that, we are not the main force of, um, from that. Uh, and then the other, the other part that I mentioned that when we started to, to create the Vulkan driver, uh, at that time we already have a compiler separate from the OpenGL driver. Uh, so just we, on, that, on that part we didn't do a lot. I mean, um, when, when we started to abstract things were from the, from the uh, OpenGL driver saying, okay, this is common, let's move to a common place. The compiler was already on, on a, um, already separate from the driver. Um, for example, the simulator, the simulator also was, this is something that was part of the OpenGL driver and we moved to a common place in order to be used. But from that part was a broad common focus just for the driver. Then, um, um, I don't know if you were asking exactly about that. Or oh, did you reply the question? Or? Yeah, you answered okay. the question. Yeah. And, and now it was this. Hey, um, I'm curious how much support you ended up getting from Broadcom through all of this. Um, okay, our main collaboration is with the Raspberry Pi. So uh, the idea is asking them only if really needed because uh, we have access to the documentation. So um, every time that we ask, they are really friendly and they ask, they have no problem. What we, ask, we also try to not ask constantly. So if we have a problem, the f our objective is fight against the problem. For example, what I said before about uh, some of the problems that we have with the kernel and we need to guess a theory. So we were fighting our guards and we, we were, you know, trying to get a good uh, base of what is happening and what will be the answer for that problem before relying to Broadcom. So it was not, okay, this is not working. I don't know what is that. Let's call Broadcom. No, we will not go with that. We try always fight with the problem and okay. Now is the moment to, to ask them. But I mean, it's, it's a good relationship if you're asking about that. Thank you. Uh, because Raspberry Pi is used in a lot of different um, projects and is pretty ubiquitous in the DIY space. Do you have any intentions of incorporating a Collabra's GitLab CI efforts in driver testing and validation for the Raspberry Pi? CI, you're asking for the CI? Yeah, Collabra has, uh, has had several talks lately um, about uh, having CI pipeline done to test uh, well, drive, the thing graphics that drivers on the real hardware. Okay, the thing is that uh, this project is, uh, the, I mean, Mesa upstream uh, is uh, the GLAB from Mesa are where they have a, their own CI. So uh, we have a farm, I mean, uh, in fact, the, um, uh, the Raspberry Pi farm that is connected to the Mesa GLAB CI is at Galia offices. And we are, the, we are the ones that are maintaining that and and configuring that. Uh, in fact, right now, one of the one, uh, quote, problems that we have is that the Raspberry Pi 5 farm is really small. It started with just one device. For some, because I think that for the Raspberry Pi 4, on the Igalia farm, we have like 12 or 20 something. It's like a tower of Raspberry Pi 4. For, but for the Raspberry Pi 5, we only, we only have some devices because it's new. We don't have too many devices. But the idea is increasing that farm. Also, the, oh, okay, I remember. The other problem with the Raspberry Pi 5 is that, the farm, I mean, is that as the connector changes, <laughs> we didn't have the connectors and the tower, you know, because it's, you know, it's a, um, I don't know how to say, it's a rack. 
I mean RAC. So the RAC that we have for the PP4 is not compatible with the RAC for the PP5. So we need to buy that stuff, buy the RPP5, and connect it with the CI. Um, also, um, so from from the point of view of the CI, we also try to be as extreme as possible. So, any other one has any question? Okay. So I think that's that's enough. Um, Please power up. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much.